What's up everybody, Classic Game Freak here, and this is the answer portion to me just asking, hey, will you send me a question? Uh, any questions you want. It was more for like the channel, uh, about gaming, whatever, and I got some great, great uh, videos in my PMs and was able to take those and uh, just had a really great time thinking about them and how I wanted to answer them. So, without further ado, let's get to the first question. You're stuck on a desert island out in the middle of nowhere. No one knows where you are. You can't be seen by anyone, much like the island on Lost. But here, you have all your basic necessities. You have food, you have water, you have shelter, um, clothing, anything you might need, you have. Now, you can only have one video game system for the rest of your life. What system would that be? And, on that system, you're only allowed to have five games. These can be any five games for that one system. Now, no computers, no emulators. Alright, tell me what you got. Peace. Retarded by Choice, this one was actually a very easy question to answer. The games might, it took me a little bit, not really, but uh, because of its, the fact that it's portable and you know I could take it out on on the beach or whatever maybe I want to be there with the sunset or whatever would be the PSP I know I have a Vita and that's all great and fine and everything but the PSP for me was just a no-brainer it has some great games on it now as far as the five games that one uh first two of choice were Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker and yeah, that's a custom case that I printed up and very, very poorly at that. Uh, Peace Walker and then Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. Because uh, there's a lot, the Peace Walker especially, very versatile. And I only have two games here because the third one was uh, only came out in Japan. And I actually have on here. Now, I know you said no computer, no emulator, so it would definitely be a Japanese copy of this game without an English patch like this one is. But um, I would say Monster Hunter Freedom 2, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, and Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. Because the Monster Hunter games, uh, I've already spent hundreds of hours playing and could play, play them a hundred hours more, hundreds of hours more, I should say, and uh, just, I don't know, you, you, it would be a challenge and take a long time to master these games, fighting these monsters by yourself. So, um, the reason I chose three of the same type of game is because of the, how many different monsters there are within the three games. Now, this is sort of an expansion on this, but, you know, I think I'd start out here and work my way up, and I'd be happy with those with the rest of my life. I mean, what game aren't you going, aren't you going to get burnt out from anyway? So if I'm going to get burnt out on games, it'd be the Monster Hunter games. Can you sing the Pokemon song? <laughs> Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Pokemon because they're cuddly and some are fluffy and and they fight each other and you gotta catch them no i can't sing the song okay so if there was going to be a zombie apocalypse and you were given the chance to transform into any video game characters that you'd like who would you pick and why um note that you have to fight and stuff for your life so i'd pick wisely that's a pretty unique question. Actually, I had thought about it a little bit, and this is kind of a cheater answer, but if I was to choose any video game character, this one's not only a video game character, but he's a comic book character, he's a cartoon character, and he's uh, a movie character, and that would be Batman. I mean, come on. Would you not want to be Batman during a zombie apocalypse? Full-on suit of armor, with all sorts of gadgets to keep not only yourself, but other people safe. And, uh, I mean, shoot, you couldn't even get bit by one of them. Uh, if you, of course, if you're wearing the armor, if, if you take off your, your bat suit, 
then you're susceptible. But, I mean, I think the only way you could get infected by a zombie is if, you know, you were chopping one down and you got blood in your face or whatever and you swallowed some of the blood or whatever. That's just gross. But, uh, Batman. Definitely. I would be Batman. What's going on, Classic Game Freak? This is G-Unit Kalima. I got a couple questions for you. What is your favorite Mega Man game? And do you prefer to play your older systems on your flat screens, or do you have a CRT TV um, just to play those on? Thanks, buddy. The Mega Man that I prefer would have to be Mega Man 2, simply because it's the one I have the most memories with. And, I mean, to me, it was just such an epic game. Uh, so many great bosses, too. Uh, I don't know. This one was kind of definitive for me. So uh, this was the one that I perfected, pretty much. Like, I played through it so much that I knew the levels. I had a lot of time on my hands. As far as flat screen or CRT screen goes, prefer the old CRT with my old games because... The flat screens just do not have that old school luster like the CRTs do. Not as heavy, and uh, I don't know, you can, these still mess up on you from time to time as you can see there. <laughs> so, having to fix that after blowing in your cartridges and everything is just par for the course. And uh, hell, you can't play Duck Hunt or anything like that without a good CRT, so hope that answers it. What's your favorite retro game console to collect for? My most favorite retro console of all time, hands down, would have to be the Nintendo Entertainment System. Obviously, the NES. There's a charm to the games. The cartridges were not too big, not too small. Well, I mean, normal size. But, I mean, come on. There's, there's, uh, there's a charm to that. It, it, it brings back childhood memories. I was an 80s child, and this was the first big real console that I had seen. I mean, of course, I played the Atari and Intellivision and ColecoVision and had an old TI-99 computer and all that. But this right here, the first time I ever played Spy Hunter and Rygar, those were the first two games I ever played on it. Uh, the first two games I'd ever seen was Punch-Out, or Mike Tyson's Punch-Out and Contra. I fell in love. To see these here, there's something just so appealing to them as opposed to any other systems. If I was given the choice, if I had to choose a modern system like an Xbox or a PS3 or play this over those, I would choose my Nintendo. There's so many good memories with them and to the day I die, I will always choose these games over any games that still have even yet to come out. What retro video game cover art would you take off one game and put on another retro video game to represent a different game? You know, this one's a tough one, and I'm going to kind of take an easy out on this. There's a game on the Super Nintendo. It's, I believe it's called, like, Phalanx, and... What the cover of it is, I mean, it's a side-scrolling uh, space scroller game like R-Type or, or uh, Gradius or, or any games like that. And on the cover is an old dude playing a banjo. I would trade that title, that cover, for any game like uh, I look down and see like R-Type Command. Uh, <laughs> any game... Really, I mean, any space, badass-looking space game. Because that game's great. Phalanx is a great game. And the cover, for years, I did not play that game because of the cover of that game. It was just god-awful, and I thought it was going to be about old geezers with big old beards playing the banjo. So, I would just change that to any space ship cover looking something that represented it a little better than that it was awful uh, number one what is your favorite game of all time and why uh my favorite game yeah this one's actually really easy monster hunter freedom unite this is probably i don't know if this is gonna be the first second or third time you're gonna see this in this video but monster hunter freedom unite what is your favorite game series of all time uh yeah the series easy one the monster hunter games by far 
just so much to them. Uh, hard, uh, easy to pick up and play, hard to master. Uh, what is your favorite soundtrack from a game or favorite song from a game? My favorite soundtrack, actually, if you click on this link here, you'll be able to see that answer. I actually answered that in a video, I think, last week. Uh, great soundtrack, though. What do you think is the most overrated game of all time, and why? Oh, yeah, let's talk overrated titles. I like the game, don't get me wrong, but this isn't so much one game that's overrated as it is a whole series. And um, I'm going to say the Call of Duty series is overrated. And that's because they come out with one every year and it's getting a little old. It is just a Madden franchise these days. And um, unfortunately, that really kills the series for me. I, I like it, don't get me wrong. Um, and a matter of fact, you all had seen what I went through to get this back. I like playing it on occasion. It's a game I do come back to. It's not one I play constantly, but um, overrated until they decide to go with a new engine or revamp the engine on this. Um, and six, what is your greatest game find uh, price-wise versus how much it's worth or rarity or what have you? Uh, this one was actually a hard one for me. I had to choose like four of the biggest titles I have in my collection uh, that were just great titles that I found for super, super cheap. Uh, first off, this one uh, really shocked me. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I got it for $4, and I mean, you can get it for about 30 on eBay, uh, and that's actually Contra 3, The Alien Wars. Uh, $4, I couldn't believe it, so to have that was really, to find that was really cool. Uh, this one, I mean, this one wasn't so much a, a great find, it was just a great, real, kind of a great trade. And I had traded Conker's Bad Fur Day for this to my buddy Retarded by Choice, who's actually also in this video. But um, trading that for Mighty Final Fight on the NES. Uh, this one's getting a little bit harder to find. Well, not so much harder to find. Well, maybe on eBay, you know, you can find it. But finding it in the wild like he did, holy crap. Uh, in a grab bag of all things. So um, I'm kind of extending the love on that because... For him to find that out in the wild like that and then trade it to me for that, it was a very good trade. These two here, uh, I I really, really couldn't believe that I had found these for the, the price that I found them for. But um, the Punisher on the Sega Genesis, complete. And uh, I think I paid only like $20 for it and it's actually a $100 game. And it's getting harder and harder, even on eBay, to find. Uh, you can find maybe two copies, two, one or two copies at any given time on eBay that are complete. And they're going for over 100 now. So uh, that's actually a really good one that I found a couple years ago. And then this one, around the same time I found the Punisher, uh, I couldn't believe it at the time. It was new in box, okay? Um, had the H seam, H seam and everything. And uh, my wife trying to be a sweetheart, had unwrapped it for me, and, um, love her to death, but, oh, just unbelievable, but it's never been played, and, um, happy I have it, got this game for $20, uh, and that's my Ninja Gaiden 3, as I said, complete in box, never played, just, just a shame that it got unwrapped, um, oh, well, you know, that's life, so, uh, this game, complete in box, is going anywhere between, like, I mean, I've seen it go from, like, 80 these days to about, I've seen one go for, like, 160, so, um, that's cool to have that complete in box. New in box, it'd be more, but what you gonna do? Those are definitely my awesome buys, uh, what I paid for compared to the rarity on the games. Very excellent. My question for you today is, um... Out of all the systems and all the games that you have, which is the one that you have the most memories on? Whether it be the Sega Genesis, whether it be the um, the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the PlayStation, which is the one 
you know, when you were growing up that you remember playing the most? It's a pretty good question. Uh, you know, I think the system I have the most memories with and the one I really do enjoy collecting, and I don't know in what portion of the video uh, my answer's in, but uh, Asian Sleepy kind of asked the same thing, and um, it would be the, the NES, the, the Nintendo, because I got that for Christmas back in 1988, I think it was, with, of course, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, and then uh, my mom and dad got me the Karate Kid, which is a horrible game, but I played the crap out of it, simply because... At that age, you don't have any money, and you, you play which can. And at the time, I thought it was cool until I got to, like, level 2 or 3, and then things were just batting me around. And it was horrible. Uh, <laughs> but I remember running around. I remember running around and saying that my gun was a spread shotgun. You know, even, even playing guns. Oh, I got the spread shotgun, or... Uh, playing Ninja Gaidan out on the playground at school, or... Or whatever you know um i it was just so fun especially whenever you you saw a new game you didn't have the internet back then of course and when you saw a new game like i remember seeing metroid for the first time and just being like oh my god i have to play this and spending countless hours playing it double dragon ninja gaiden as i've said before i'm looking up at at my collection here even games like uh, mag max and c cross uh I remember playing those, uh, POW, uh, I didn't play that in the arcade, that was on Nintendo, Metal Gear, so many great games, so many memories, uh, my collection is just filled with great memories, and that's why I would choose the Nintendo. My question is, was there a game that you didn't like as a kid, but you liked as an adult? I think... The one game, actually, it was a many games that I didn't like whenever I was younger because they were too simplistic. Uh, but what games weren't, like, on Nintendo and so on. If it's one game that I definitely appreciate more, and it's actually one of my favorite coin-op games now that I didn't like whenever I was younger, is actually Galaga. And to me, those games were just so plain. I mean, Space Invaders had been done through and through, and, and like Pac-Man and so on, but now, anytime I see a Galaga machine, I have to play it. Um, went and saw Iron Man 3 last weekend, went to the movie theater, and they, you know, had Time Crisis, and these big old flashy games, and off in the corner, there was the Galaga machine. Of course, it took 50 cents to play it. Uh, that isn't the way it used to be, but there's Galaga. I can't help but play it. Great game, and I'm bummed that I didn't like it as a, as a child, so I'm really glad that I can appreciate it now as an adult. Um, what is your, uh, what do you want to do next with your channel? Because you've pushed the envelope in such a way, I'd like to hear your input of how you can push this channel, your channel even further, and what are your goals for it, so? Well, what I'm wanting to do with my channel, uh, I have mentioned it before that I really want to start doing reviews, and now that I have some better video quality, and uh, as well as audio quality, I can really do that. I feel like I'm not... Um, handicapped as far as being able to do reviews and so on go. So I'm wanting to bring more views here. I'm wanting to cut back on pickup videos because it just seems to me like uh, they're a little too easy. For me, I need a challenge and I think for me the editing portion and what to say during the reviews would really, really challenge me. So, as I said, I'm always looking for that one, that challenge, and um, if it's one thing I love doing is, is editing a video, so that's going to bring both of, that, both of those to the table for me, and um, that's what I want to do next with my channel, I, and give, give people a lot of information, uh, hopefully, you know, uh, people can come away from my channel with hey, that information really helped me, I appreciated it, you know, and of course they hit like and subscribe, that'd be awesome. I think um, I would really like to see my channel, channel 
and its videos get more views. That would be just just cool to me, and um, that would just be cool. So there you have it. There's the questions. Thank you everybody for asking what you did. It was very awesome to get some of those unique questions that took me a little bit to answer. And, you know, to be able to take you all and put the videos on here with the questions and get your face out there and your names, that's what I like doing. Uh, the gaming community isn't, for me, just about collecting or anything like that. It's about also making friends who share the same passion as you do and um, being able to talk about them, to, to be able to PM somebody and say, what do you think of this game? Or, or how are you doing? What are you playing lately? That's great. So uh, if you haven't subscribed to any of them that have asked the questions, please subscribe to them. They all have great channels and um, growing each day. So uh, thank you once again for the questions. Uh, I've got a ton of new content coming. Got my new camera with just this awesome quality. Got better audio. Big thank you to Xander Scullion for the DIY lavalier microphones and how to how to make them. Uh, that was really awesome. Uh, so please keep coming back. Please hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button more to. The people that ask me questions, uh, that would make me happy. Uh, happier than getting your sub if you don't like my videos for some reason. Then, um, hey, go go find something you like on here. So, thanks everybody. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.